Tonight's lesson is on multi-step ratio problems. We're going to apply proportional reasoning to help us solve these problems. I'd like to look at commission. I don't know if you understand what commission is. Commission, many times if you sell real estate, if you sell homes, or if you sell cars, you work on commission. Commission is earnings based on a percentage or fractional part of the total amount you sell. So let's take a look at what happens when you sell cars. A used car salesperson receives a commission of one twelfth of the sales price of the car for each car he sells. So every time he sells a car, he makes one twelfth of that sale price as a commission. That's what he takes home for having sold the car. What would the sales commission be on a car that sold for $21,999? Pause the video, try it out, come on back. I find sometimes that a visual is helpful to me when I try to solve these problems. So if I look at this one, $21,999, I know his commission is one twelfth of that. So I just break that into 12 parts and then I'll know one twelfth of the total will be his commission. So if I break it into 12 parts, 21,999, breaking that total into 12 parts means dividing it into 12 equal groups. So if we take 21,999 and we divide by 12, we get $1,000. $1,833.25. So one twelfth of $21,999 is $1,833.25. That's what that car salesperson will make for selling that car. You could also just use commission is equal to your rate times your total amount of sale, your original for what the car originally cost. So our rate is one twelfth times that original cost of the car, $21,999. $21,999 over one, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, you'll get $21,999 over 12. Fraction bar means to divide, and you'll end up, of course, with the exact same commission. Let's talk about discount or markdown. It's the amount by which a regular price is reduced. You need to subtract the discount from the regular price to get your sale price. So if you take your regular price minus your discount, you'll come up with the sale price. At Peter's Pants Palace, a certain pair of pants usually sells for $33. If Peter advertises that the store is having a one-third off sale, what is the sale price of pants that were originally $33? Take a minute, pause the video, try it out. Okay, <clears throat> I normally like pictures to help me with these. So I'm going to just take a look at... My pants were originally $33, and I know the sale is for one-third off. So one-third off. So I'm going to break this 33 into thirds. So I'll take my 33, divide that into three parts to figure out what a third of 33 is. 33 divided by 3 is 11. So each third of 33 is 11. 11 plus 11 is 22, plus 11 more is 33. I'm going to take one third off. So here's one third of 33. We just figured out that was $11. We're going to take that off, which means we're still going to be paying two thirds of the original price. Well, two thirds of our original price, 11 plus 11, is $22. Two thirds of our original price is 22. And if you have one third off, you're still paying two thirds. Now, some of you might be more comfortable just working the math of it out. So you would be more comfortable taking your rate, which is one-third, times your original, which is 33, to come up with your discount. So you just take your original times the rate to get the discount. One-third of 33. 33 is the same as 33 over 1. Multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 33 over 3. 33 divided by 3. It actually is exactly the same as our visual. Is 11. So $11 would be your discount. So if your regular price was $33, you would need to subtract off that discount. So that's what happens at stores when you have a sale. You have to take off the discount of $11, 33 minus 11. The sale price is still $22.
more ways to go about that problem, but there's a few. Now let's talk about markup. Markup is an amount by which an original price is now increased. You'll need to add a markup to the original price to get your selling price. So stores pay or um, car companies pay an original amount for their item. They then increase the amount that they're going to sell the item for. They mark it up so that they can make a profit. So let's take a look at an example. A motorcycle dealer paid a certain price for a motorcycle. He paid a certain original. And then he marked it up by one-fifth of that original price that he paid. He sold it for $15,000. What was the original price? So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, and come on back. Again, I like visuals. So I don't know what the original was, but I know he took that original, he took one-fifth of that original, original, and he marked it up by that one-fifth. He tacked on an extra one-fifth to come up with the total of $15,000. So he took a one-fifth of it and he tacked it back on to come up with his selling price of $15,000. So if I look at this now, to get back to the original, I take a look at the 15,000, and now instead of being broken into five parts, because we tacked one of those fifths back on, it's actually broken into one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So that means I could take 15,000, and I could divide by six to figure out what each part in my diagram would be. 15,000 divided by six is 2,500. So this is 2,500 in each of these parts. And that gets us up to our 15,000 total. But I have to tell you, the original that they paid is just five of those six parts. You tacked an extra one back on to get up to the 15000 So the original price that was paid for this motorcycle is actually 2500 times 5. Use your calculator if you need. That's $12,500. So the original that was paid was $12,500. We can check to make sure that makes sense. We can take our original, which is 12500 we can figure out our markup. You know for your markup, you just take your rate times your original, just like we did with commission, just like we did with discount. Take your rate times your original. That will give you your markup. So that's 12,500 over five, which of course is 2,500. So if I tack on an extra 2,500, to the 12,500, add those together, and guess what? You absolutely come up with the 15,000 for the selling price. So the original was 12,500. One final example to look at. As part of a marketing ploy, some businesses mark up their prices before they advertise a sales event. Some companies use this practice as a way to entice customers into the store without sacrificing their profits. People think they're getting a deal, but because the company's already marked up the cost by so much, they're still paying more than what the item is worth, even at a sale. A furniture store wants to host a sales event to improve their profit margin. How much profit will the business make on the sale of a couch that is marked up by one-third and then sold at one-fifth off discount if the original price is $2,400? So take a minute, pause the video, try it out, come on back. So what I do is, again, I work off of visuals. That's just the type of learner that I am. So I take my 2400 and I say I want to mark it up by one third. So I'm like, okay, I want to find a third of that 2400 and then I know I want to add that back on for my markup. So how do I find a third of 2400? Well, I take 2400 and break it into three parts. On your calculator, you can do 2400 divided by three. You will figure out each of those parts is $800. So a third of 2400 is 800. You then are going to mark it up by that amount. So you're going to tack that 800 back on. So now instead of 2400, if we take a look, the new price 
is actually 3,200. 2,400 times 800 more is 3,200. Once you come up with the 3,200, we're going to take one-fifth off of that. So I'm going to take 3,200 and break it into five parts. 3,200 divided by 5. 3,200 divided by 5. Use your calculator if you need. I believe is $640. So a fifth of 3,200 is 640. And what you are going to do is you're going to want to take off one-fifth, it's one-fifth off. Take off one-fifth from that 3,200. You're still paying four-fifths. So if I take 6,400, or I'm sorry, 640 times four, I get, oops, let's go back to that other slide. Sorry about that. 640 times four, I get $2,560. So $2,560 is what they are going to sell that couch for. So let's just make sure that we answered the question that was asked. How much profit will the business make on the sale of the couch? Oh, we need the profit. The profit will be what they sold it for and take away what they had to pay for the couch, which was $2,400. So even after they've put that couch on sale, they are still making a $160 profit. So they're still making profit. That store is still making money off of you. So sorry that my slides keep going. So what I want to do is that that's how we go about that problem. I just want to say if the visuals are not helpful to you, you can always do this. If you know it's marked up by one third, the markup rate is one third times the original of 2400. That's 2400 over one, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. That's 2400 over three. 2400 divided by three is actually 800. So that right there would be your markup. So you could always take your original of 2400. Add on your markup of 800. That gets you to the new selling price of 3,200 for the couch. That's the new selling price. Now for a discount, you're going to take, we know our discount is one fifth off. So then for our discount, I'm just going to continue up here. For our discount, I can take one fifth that rate times my selling price of $3,200. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom, that's 3,200 divided by 5. 3,200 divided by 5 we know is $640. And then that's my discount. That tells me my discount. To find my sale price, I would take my the selling price of 3,200, subtract off my discount of 640, and that will give me my sale price of 25 60. So if the visuals aren't helpful, you can just always take your rate times your original and then decide, do I have to add it on for a markup, subtract it off for a discount? Hopefully that was helpful. Tomorrow's focus question that you need to write up and be ready to share. When are markups and markdowns used? How are they similar and how are they different? So do a nice write up on that. Thanks. Have a good night.